In this video, we're going to be talking about the partial fraction decompositions. So a rational expression can often be written as the sum of two or more simple, simpler rational expressions. So for example, here we have x plus 7 divided by x squared minus x minus 6. Well, this can be rewritten as 2 divided by x minus 3 plus negative 1 divided by x plus 2. So each fraction on the right side of the equation is what we call a partial fraction and together they make up the partial fraction decomposition which is the left hand side. Now there are some different ways that we can have this decomposition of our n of x divided by our d of x, so of our two functions, and dividing them into partial fractions. So we have that we want to be able to divide when we're improper. So that means the degree of your top function needs to be greater than or equal to the degree of your bottom function. And we divide the, new, the denominator into the numerator to obtain um, our n of x divided by our d of x equals our polynomial plus n sub 1 of x divided by d of x. So there's some other steps there as well. Then we also have factoring the denominator. We also have linear factors, quadratic factors. Now, one of the most important applications of partial fractions is in calculus. Now, partial fractions can be used in calculus operations called anti-differentiation. So it's really in our integral math or our integrated calculus. So let's look at an example for a simple partial fraction decomposition. So here we have the partial fraction decomposition of x plus 7 mm -hmm. over x squared minus x minus 6. And so we're going to write that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to factor our denominator. Now we're going to use a method here that isn't really shown a lot in textbooks, but it's actually a lot simpler. So we're going to factor our denominator, and that gives us x minus 3 and x plus 2. And then we're going to find the zeros, and that's something that we're going to use to help make this problem a little bit easier. So we're going to use our zero product property and set each factor equal to zero, and then solve, giving us x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So we can now write that x plus 7 divided by x squared minus 6 breaks into x plus 7 divided by x minus 3 times x minus 2. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take each of those factors and write them over a value, a and b, that we don't know. Then we're going to multiply to get a common denominator. So we're going to multiply our a by x plus 2 and its denominator by x plus 2. And the numerator and our second function, or excuse me, our second fraction by x minus 3 and the denominator by x minus 3. What this does is it gets rid of all of our denominators and makes the problem a whole lot easier to manage. So that leaves us with x plus 7 equals a times x plus 2 plus b times x minus 3. And this is where we start to get a little simpler and do, and do this simpler method. So we're going to take these zeros and we're going to plug them in. We're going to do it one at a time. So we're going to start with this x equals 3. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in this 3. So I have 3 plus 7 equals a times our 3 plus 2 plus our b times our 3 minus 3. And now we're going to simplify what we have. So we have 10 equals 5a plus b times 0. Now b times 0 is just going to be a 0. So really we just have 10 equals 5a. And so this is pretty easy math to see. Like what number times 5 is going to give us a 10 and it should be a 2. Now if you need to, you can definitely finish solving to get that 2 equals our a value. Now we're going to plug in our second zero. So now we're going to plug in this, this negative 2 using the same method that we just did or using the same equation. 
So we plug in our negative 2 to all the places that we have the x. And that gives us negative 2 plus 7 equals a times the quantity negative 2 plus 2 plus b times the quantity negative 2 minus 3. So that's going to end up giving us 5 equals a times 0 plus negative 5b. And a times 0 is going to be a 0, so really we have 5 equals negative 5b. So what number times negative 5 will give us a positive 5? Well, it should be a negative 1. But we can finish solving to make sure to divide both sides by negative 5, and we see that negative 1 is in fact b. So now we're able to write our final answer which is x plus 7 over x squared minus x minus 6 equals 2 divided by x minus 3 plus negative 1 divided by x plus 2. And we're finished.